Welcome back to Connecting Africa. Ending energy poverty on the continent is top priority, and a group of leaders actively discussing this are women in the industry. They've come together on the sidelines of Africa Energy Week. Their goal? How to boost the number of women working in the energy sector. By international standards, it's still a very male-dominated industry. Among 29 countries surveyed by the International Energy Agency in 2018, there were 76% less women than men working in the energy sector, compared with an 8% gap between women and men in the global workforce. I think within the energy industry itself, we bring a perspective that perhaps would be missing otherwise if we were not participating. And then I think also we are, as, as women, we're very concerned about our children and our children's children. And so as we build our careers and we work in the industry, we also see it as building for the future. Women bring a different flavor, a different perspective. And the, you know, the requirement of energy also is gender-based. If you look at the, you know, if you look at women and men and children for that matter, you know, because the requirements of, especially in the African states, right, um, the involvement of women actually brings the more transformation of what energy should be or should mean to women overall. What do you think women bring to the table? One of the key things is uh, women don't start initially with the profit motive. Profit is important, uh, but it's understanding in the long term what is it we want for our, co our co country, what do we want for our communities, how do we want to build an energy infrastructure that will, will um, respond to the needs, so not just of what the industrialization needs us for Africa, but also in terms of the long-term future of sustainable energy uh, generation, energy uh, transmission, and making sure that our communities do get the access that they need. Several initiatives are underway to increase women's participation in the energy sector. The African Energy Chamber says it's working to increase the number of women working in the hydrogen sector. While the World Bank has launched the Energy to Equal and Women in Renewables Energy in Africa initiatives to address the gender gap, some firms are doing a lot more than others. Among them is energy giant BP, and I sat down with its Africa CEO, Taylo Mojepalo. I want to talk about women in this industry. You've been a big proponent of creating more diversity at boardrooms. We went through a change. Uh, we were an you know, international oil company, and now we're moving towards what we call an integrated energy company. Post the development of our new strategy, we also came up with new aims uh, that really guide us in our purpose in terms of what we do as an organization. And I must say today, of the executive leadership team of BP Global, six out of 11 of our leadership team are women. It's never been done before. That is new for us. These are very competent women. We've got brilliant engineers who just have never really had the opportunity and they are there now, you know, actually leading the organization. We're gathered for Energy Week and I think, you know, listening to the opening statements, everyone is talking about the energy deficit on the continent, that 600 million Africans don't have access to stable and reliable, safe electricity. How are you viewing this dilemma? It's quite clear that Africa has an energy deficit. In fact, you probably only have about 12% of Africa's population that have access to electricity, which is actually quite a tragedy. Now, if you look at the energy sources that we have, we've got an abundance of various energy sources. Currently, our largest energy source at the moment is coal. And as we know, coal, from a carbon emissions perspective, is you know, quite high. We also have access to an abundance of solar, an abundance of wind energy, as well as nuclear. And uh, you know, now we do see the emergence of LNG gas, which we do see as a transition gas. And Africa has all of these. So the way we look at it is to make sure that we've got the right mix to serve the geographies that we participate in. I want to talk about LNG. How quickly can we transition away from things that we've become very accustomed to? I call. LNG is imminent. It is here. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of work and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of projects that are on the go on LNG. And particularly, if you look at Africa and Mauritania and Senegal, for example, BP, we have got uh, projects that we have. There is some work as well on the Horn of Africa along um, in Egypt as well. There is some work around gas. 
And if you look at the Southern Basin as well, um, there are many companies that are actually exploring, making sure that they put in the right resources to explore for LNG because it's an important transition gas. And uh, more especially, if you look at on the north of Mozambique as well, there is a lot of work that, uh, you know, very soon and quite imminent offtake will be um, taking place shortly. How long is it going to take us for us to become truly energy independent, right? Whether it's solar wind, whether it's gas, whether it's refining oil on the continent. When you talk about energy, there are three things in my mind that you've got to make sure are in place. Adequate competition, um, efficiency of your um, value chain, as well as diversity. Those three are actually very important. And if you think about the efficiency aspect, for as long as you're not efficient, you can have 20 refineries in, in Africa. If they're not efficient, you will actually do your people a disservice because you won't be able to give them cheap energy. Mm -hmm. So you have to be extremely efficient. And what we are finding now is, you know, there are other regions that are able to compete more effectively than some of the refineries that operate in Africa. And as a result, you know, it becomes actually cheaper. But that is not, you know, the ideal end state. So it's important that we actually understand those three factors at play. Do you believe that Africa can help solve some of the world's global energy issues and, and deficits just by de facto our production capacity, which we are yet to fulfill, but we have this potential? Absolutely. If you look at the current crisis now that's playing out in Europe, it presents a perfect opportunity for Africa to be a major player in, this gas, um, in the gas industry and not only in the gas, but also in the oil industry. But as you know, we've been speaking about gas as a transition um, um, energy source. And uh, we believe that you know, the African continent is well placed to participate and we need to just create an enabling environment for um, corporates to be able to participate. Well, that's it for this edition of Connecting Africa. If you want to know more about the stories on our program, you can check out our website from me and Lenny Jockers here in Cape Town. Until next time, let's keep on connecting.